Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show. Your best friend, science, astronomy, and telescopes. Well, I hope at least one of them. So over here we have the Ascar 140 on the EQ6. Let me just tell you about the weather. In the last four months, there's only been about five clear days. And at least two of them, there was snow at least three foot up. And there's no way I would have been able to shovel this that thing and what throw it over the fence I don't even know how to shovel that's why I live in a townhouse corporation uh, so I don't have to worry about cutting the grass well except my little grass and uh, shoveling the snow anyway besides that there was only three other clear nights which is very rare it's one of the worst winters as far as clear uh, visibility is concerned since I could remember now I know even this year, or I guess this last year that just passed, uh, I know even Florida got a big snowstorm, which they, it's like once in a thousand uh, percent or something like that. So that's just what kind of sometimes weather we have. So today's clear and it looks like uh, there's Ceres right there. And so which means uh, I think up there's Orion. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. And I don't know if you can, oh, that's Jupiter over there. And I'm not sure, I don't know. Um, Mars is up there. Anyway, so let's, let's give it a look. I, what's weird is this year, I only got to look at Venus once maybe. And it's way long gone. It's past the building like that direction. So I won't even be able to see it unless I go all the way to the street. And I don't want to do that with my big equipment, right? And then record and that type of thing. So, and even Jupiter, um, I've seen two or three times maximum. Mars, I'm not even, I think I've seen one crappy night of it, but not really. So hopefully today's not windy. It's perfectly clear. So let's give it a shot. Okay, since Jupiter is in this direction, I raised it as high as it can go, and I'm only bending down a little tiny bit, which is not that bad, so I did that off camera. Uh, this guy's been cooling for about, I think an hour, uh, or an hour and five minutes or something, uh, so it should be fine. Even though spring is coming, it's still kind of coolish right now in the night. Okay, wow, that was like less than a second to find Jupiter. So Jupiter has three moons on this side, one moon on that side. I'm just using a low power eyepiece because I don't have a finder's goal. You guys probably heard me say that lots of times. That uh, I don't really use the finder's scope for the easy stuff. I just kind of point um, by eye and then it's normally wiggle with the low power right piece and then there you go and let's pop in a high power eyepiece my favorite eyepieces is the mead 4000 series japan ultra wide angle it's like that volcano top beautiful eyepieces so i still have them and i don't plan on getting rid of it so let's focus Oh, it's right at the bottom so jumping from a 24 to a 6.7 is still in the field of view but just at the bottom. I don't really see any hint of chromatic aberration. The two stripes are easily. Let's pump up the power a little more to uh, maybe a 4.7 ultra wide. Okay, let me focus. It's at the bottom again, bring it up. You guys know I can't even see north, so I guess where Polaris roughly is usually I get pretty good tracking Jupiter seems a little soft so I don't know if this had enough cooling or needs a little bit more or maybe the seeing up there although it's nice and clear I can see a lot of stars but maybe the seeing is not perfect or the transparency or maybe both actually are the stars blinking yeah, okay. A little bit, like medium-ish. Yeah, not a lot, not like a super lot. 
not a tiny bit, but kind of like medium, I would say. I was just looking at Ceres, so it's kind of blinking a little, and a couple stars in the Orion, even the belt stars, the three, you can kind of see them blinking. So that means seeing is not really perfect today, but it's clear. So what can you do? You know what I was thinking? Now you guys know I compared this telescope to the William Optics 128, and they seemed to be almost like a tie. Now that one was a five inch, this is a five and a half inch. Do you guys, or would you guys like me to test this five and a half inch? It's a triplet, even though it's like it's a lower quality triplet, 51 lens, against the Takahashi 150. It's also a triplet, but a higher grade triplet, and it's half an inch. So it's kind of like, this is equal to that other video where the William Optics, this was half an inch diameter more than the William Optics. Now the Takahashi should be a half an inch diameter larger than this. And then maybe we can see if the, you know, the quality wise up to a top tier uh, refractor. If you guys would like to see that, let me know. Yeah, to tell you the truth, I've seen Jupiter much better before. Unfortunately, it'd be too late for me to grab another scope uh, to bring outside to see if there's any difference because then that scope wouldn't be cooled down at all so it wouldn't be fair uh, so I'm not even uh, we're, we're not gonna bother that so right now I put a two times Barlow with the 6.7 now I don't know what the power is offhand but maybe when I edit I can it's just uh, kind of like a mush ball so I, I think it's going beyond what today's capability is uh, so there's no point going this high okay let's swing over to mars which i have yet to even see this year and it's probably just past opposition or, or whatever i don't know okay a low power eyepiece again to 24. super wide where's the 6.7 that's how i remember mars to be if I see any features, I'm gonna bump up the power one more time. Mars is hard in any telescope. Super red, super orange. Okay, it's right in the middle. I know most new people they're always disappointed of Mars, but you can definitely see it's a sphere. I believe I see the polar cap. Any dark features? I'm gonna say no. However, I will try the Barlow and the 6.7. Mars seems more steady. I'm going to try to push the power a little bit more. It's not bad for Mars. Yeah, I believe the polar cap is there. But features, I'm not sure. Oh, wait a minute. Now that I'm looking... Because this is really my first time of the year looking at Mars, I do think I see some brown, browning now, the more I, I study it. Now, it's not so easy to see. I definitely want to do the Takahashi against this guy. And hopefully in the next couple of nights it's clear. And then I would, I'll see. I don't think it's good enough for me to um, put my camera to it and take a video. Normally, it's kind of because, well, usually I put my cell phone to the eyepiece, right? and it always lowers the quality because it's just a smartphone or a cell phone it's not really a you know high-end uh, astrophotography camera or anything like that uh, it's not made for astrophotography so whatever i normally see here it goes down by oh, i would say almost like 30 to 40 percent image quality on the cell phone so today that it's not so great the images it's just gonna be but ugly if I put the cell phone camera to a, you know, so-so view, right? Does that make sense? So I don't even think it's worth putting it up. When the image is perfect, then I put it, at least you can see some of the bigger, like the bright uh, banding and stuff like that. But it's just not good enough today. Let's look, since the Orion is nice and high, Let's take a look at that guy in a 140 millimeter refractor. And it's much 
lower. Oh, I just saw a satellite pass right near the Orion Nebula. I don't know if you guys are looking at it today as well. Okay, I want to push the power on the Orion Nebula a little bit. Let's go to the 6.7. You can definitely easily tell the, the cloud is definitely there. And I don't think any new person would not see it. I know sometimes they have a hard time seeing it, but easily you can see it from the city. Four main ones are definitely clear and split and a nice, almost like a square uh, with the two top being a little further apart than the two bottom. But as far as seeing the fifth and sixth, I'm gonna say no. It's probably not a big enough scope to do that. I believe it needs much larger aperture. Orion always looks beautiful no matter what instrument you use. And I think that's going to be it for tonight, guys. Give me a quick text and tell me if you want to see that comparison. And I'll try my best. And we'll see if we can do it. Right now, I'm just trying to look for M41, which is, uh, I'm just going off memory. Oh, there it is, yeah. It should be easy. I mean, I don't even have a finder scope. I don't even have a chart here. You guys should be able to look at that one too very easily. Okay guys, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video. This is Joe Jaguar. I do have members video where once a month I put one video just for the members. It doesn't go on the public uh, part. Why don't you guys join if you want to see something that uh, you probably won't see. And I think I'm going to start uh, changing it a little bit, which means I think I'm going to put more to encourage more people to come out on that one, uh, on the members. I'm going to start putting more uh, videos to the eyepiece if I think it's worth it. It's going to be a slightly more on um, that format. So if you guys want to come join that, it's only 99 cents uh, once a month. It helps the channel grow so I can buy products to always show you guys. Sometimes I also do some of the comparisons are on the members, so if you'd like to see that, that's another uh, type of videos I put up there. Why not you? Why not me?